NBC Sports presents the United States Olympic Trials for the Marathon. Houston, Texas, where today more than 300 of the top marathon runners in the United States will take to the streets, seeking a spot on the Olympic team. 26.2 miles to determine the top three men and top three women to represent the U.S. in London. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Houston for the Olympic Marathon Trials. Tom Hammond, happy to welcome Craig Mass back, back to our NBC broadcast, and joined by two-time Olympian Todd Williams as well. At stake today, the spots on the U.S. Marathon team for the London Olympics coming up this summer. The top three finishers among the men, top three finishers among the women will earn that ticket to London. And it is unique because both men and women will be on the same course at the same time. The men get about a 15-minute head start, and then the women will be sent on their way. And what should we expect today? Todd, what about the men's competition? You know, on the men's side, we have an overwhelming favorite in Ryan Hall. A 29-year-old, he's training in Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, he dominated the 2008 Olympic trials, setting the event record in 209.02. From there, he went on to do great things. He, he finished in the top five in all the major marathons around the world. Uh, he's really confident. We spoke to him yesterday, and he said, he goes, you know, I'm here to push the pace. I don't want anybody in this field not to run 26.2 miles. If I'm not going to make this team, I'm going to make sure that they know that I was in the race. Outside of him, you can't not mention Mepka Flesge, Olympic silver medalist out of Athens. Uh, you know, he's been really consistent. He's been a veteran. He's battled some bumps and bruises over the last few years, but, you know, he's confident. He's here. He said, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I was going to make my third Olympic team heading to London. I'm excited, as you can tell. I just want to get down to that starting line and get this thing going. And what about the women's competition, Craig? Well, as Todd references, the deepest women's Olympic trials field ever, the favorites have to be Desiree Davila. She comes in with the fastest qualifying time, and she's also had perfect preparation, which everybody's talking about. Shalane Flanagan won the bronze medal in the Olympics in Beijing in the 10,000 meters. Is probably the most talented woman in the field. Right. She, too, feels very confident. But watch out for some veterans. Dina Castor, who won the 2004 Olympic bronze medal, is ready to go. And Kara Goucher, uncertain about her training, but she's very talented as well. The skyline of Houston, Texas, and in a couple of moments, the runners will start on their way through the streets of downtown to determine the U.S. Olympic marathon team. They all start with a loop of 2.2 miles and then set out on an 8-mile loop. They'll complete that three times for the required 26.2 miles. Top three finishers will earn that trip to London. And this course was meant to replicate the Olympic course in London this summer at the Olympics. It's flat and a loop course, which they will complete to determine the Olympic teams. And as the start time approaches for the men here in Houston, the weather 42 degrees, not much wind at all, and the forecast for sunny skies as they complete their 26.2 mile journey. 114 men will take the starting line here with the top three to make it on the Olympic team. The great Frank Shorter is the official starter. Frank, the only man to ever win two Olympic trials races. Shorter fires the starter's pistol to send them on their way. 114 men. 26.2 miles on this flat loop course. And the top three to London. Frank Shorter, the 1972 Olympic champion, silver medal in 1976. Obviously, we could have some words of advice for this team about not only how to qualify, but how to perform in the Olympics as well. All right, Todd, what about strategy now early in the race? You know, right there at the start, you know, in the inside left was Ryan Hall, and, and he said yesterday, he said, you know, if these guys are going to run with me, they're just not going to try to run for, for 20 miles or 15 miles. They're going to run this whole distance. And as you can see, you know, some of the players are right up in front already with Ryan. Abdi Abdi Rahman right there and Mepka Flesky right in the top three here in the first half mile. I like what Ryan Hall said to us yesterday. He said, 
And we said, what's your strategy? What's your plan? He says, my strategy is to have no strategy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, there is something to be said for improvising and for uh, playing the race as it develops. And this is where Ryan feels comfortable. I mean, if you look at his history of his last, or his nine marathons that he's run, uh, he's not afraid to get after it. I mean, at the London Marathon, Chicago, Boston, he gets out and he's not afraid to push the pace. And, and you can see if, if you're doing it in the first half mile of the Olympic trials in a pressure packed situation like this, uh, he's not afraid at all. And, and these guys in the back there, he's taking the pretenders out of it pretty much already. So Ryan Hall from Redding, California, the defending trials winner, uh, running his third marathon in the last 11 months and going right to the front. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the fact that Ryan Hall is coming back from the Chicago Marathon, which was in October. Meb Kaflesdi coming back from the New York City Marathon, which was in November. And is it too soon? Did they have enough rest? Well, back in 1972, when Frank Shorter qualified, they only had two months between the Olympic trials and the Olympics themselves, and he was able to win and dominate that field. So if they've done their preparation uh, correctly, and we know Kaflesky over on the right of the screen in the blue hat uh, has had some injury problems, if they've done their preparation correctly, they can be ready. So the man underway in the Marathon Olympic Trials, Ryan Hall, the early leader. Welcome back to the Olympic Marathon Trials from Houston, Texas. The men have completed the first 2.2 loop in their course and now out on the eight mile loop with Ryan Hall leading Mo Trafay. Uh, Dathan Ritzenhain is in there with Med Kaflesky and Abdi Abdirachman in that lead pack and back at the start finish line the women are about to be sent on their way joan benoit samuelson is the official starter as 191 women tow the line and about to start their 26.2 mile journey and I had the opportunity uh, to run three Olympic trials, and what's going through these women's head right now is all the work that they put in and how to execute a plan. So this is going to be a great race. The conditions are primed to run fast. And I'm, I'm interested to see if a Shalane Flanagan or Adina Castor executes her plan like Ryan Hall has and just take it from the gun and push the pace. So there you have it, men and women on the course at the same time. The men started uh, 15 minutes or so ago. They're out on the eight mile loop of the course as the women begin their 2.2 mile loop to open things up in the women's competition. 191 women out on the course. Now, and Todd, you said it right. I'm fascinated by the fact that Ryan Hall has gone straight to the front. He's thrown down the gauntlet to the rest of the field running 207.30 pace for the first three miles or so, will the women follow the same course of action? Desiree Davilet knows that she's multiple minutes faster than many of the women in the field. Does she take a chance uh, at, at letting the pace go slowly and make it more competitive at the end, or does she push and make it what many people told us that they wanted to have, an honest race? And after talking to Dina yesterday, I mean, she seems confident to say, you know, if nobody does take it, I'm going to make sure that the pace is honest as well. And you can see her that she's already up into the front and, and trying to get rid of the pretenders. But, you know, back to the men's race, I mean, Ryan Hall is just really getting after it. And we, we kind of laughed about it yesterday. Is there going to be somebody that jumps out front there and tries to get, get some camera time? Ryan Hall didn't let anyone get camera time. He's got the camera all to himself for the first two and a half miles. So the women have yet to sort themselves out just underway as we go back and check on the progress of the men with Ryan Hall still in front. This is an interesting part of the of the course here where it's a slight uphill. I, I had the impression before I came to town, Todd, that this was a pancake flat course. Uh, there'd been such fast times in previous half marathons on this course, but in fact, uh, there are some hills and the runners told us they like to have a little bit of hills. They recruit some different muscle fibers when they run some hills. It's not just flat and it does mimic as Tom said earlier that London course. You see at the top of your screen the uh, standings after mile three. 
with Ryan Hall taking the lead as shortly after the start and he's been there all the way so far. Mo Trefay is uh, tracking him in that uh, lead group and he's an interesting uh, runner because you don't know how long he's going to last right he's not a marathon regular you know I had the opportunity to see Mo, Mo run at the uh, Gate River on the national championship uh, for 15 K a few years ago and you know nobody really knew Mo Trefay and he went out in 415 for the first mile of a nine mile 9.3 mile race and, and that caught my eye and I thought well this kid's just going to fade away but he's the he's the real deal now if he can get past 20 miles and make it to 20 I mean this could be his breakthrough race at the distance and, and make his first Olympic team. Well, as Tom referenced, his only marathon, the London Marathon, and, you know, he went with the leaders. He didn't hang back at all, but he cratered. And he said, well, I said, what did you learn from that race? He said, the marathon's a very long race. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan Hall, the defending Olympic trials champion, leading the men and the, the women yet to sort themselves out shortly after the start of their race. That's a pretty unique picture, men and women on the course at the same time. Talking about Trefay, you know, he, I said, who were your idols growing up? He was born in Morocco, but grew up from age 14 in Southern California. And he said, well, he met Ryan Hall when he was a high school freshman. He said Hall was a senior and he was immediately his idol. He wanted to do what Ryan Hall did. And today he's tracking him in the Olympic trials marathon. So both races are underway in Houston. The Olympic marathon trials continue on the streets of Houston, Texas. Men on the left with a lead group of about seven. Ryan Hall in front as he has been throughout. And on the right, the women starting to separate themselves a little bit. Desi Davila is uh, the leader along with uh, Amy Hastings, Shalane Flanagan and others. Hastings and Davila, Arizona State teammates and roommates during their collegiate days. So uh, that's the way they stand at the moment. Men on the left, women on the right, continuing through this course in Houston. And also out on the course is the fourth member of our broadcast team, Lewis Johnson. Let's check in with him now. Lewis? Well, Tom, I'll be keeping an eye on things out here on the roads today. And the hard concrete streets of Houston were a topic of discussion. Ryan Hall said he had not changed his training, wears the same shoes, but knows that his legs will be beat up after this race is done. But Shalane Flanagan, on the other hand, says she is changing her shoes, needs a more robust shoe that will really give her more protection as the race goes around. One thing that everyone agrees about, that it's a great experience to run this loop course, something that will mimic the Olympic course of London if if they make the team today. Tom? All right, Lewis. And uh, there you see the women with uh, Davila in front at the moment. And uh, Amy Hastings, her former Arizona State teammate, right there with Shalane Flanagan, who is uh, one of the favorites today. What a contrast between the two races. The men still running sub five minute miles, uh, clicking those off, separating from the pack. The women beginning with a six minute and 15 second mile, running 547 for the second mile. And then Davila came in and said, okay, enough fooling around, ran 535 for her third mile. And now they've started to separate a little bit, Todd. And the first two miles, you know, that surprises me because, you know, seeing some of the workouts that Desiree has done over the last uh, couple months, and she even said uh, in the press conference, that, look, I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to let the pace be slowed at all. I'm going to go. And I think when she saw that first mile at 613 and then following that up with a 547, she's like, you know, similar to what Ryan's done. Let's get rid of the pretenders and let's, let's, let's play ball now. Second uh, in the Boston Marathon last year battling for the lead late in the race making her uh, the third fastest American in history behind Dina Castor and Joan Benoit Samuelson the official starter of the women's race today that's uh, Davila 28 years old as we check in with the men and we see that Ryan Hall now has dropped back into uh, second place but the lead pack is still about uh, seven runners as Kofleski has taken over the lead and that really doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, Meb's a veteran, and, and the first six, seven miles are right at 450 pace, which is sub 207, which is flying. And you're seeing him string out right now. So that tells me Meb is really, really confident. Because if he wasn't, I think you'd see him pack it in and let Ryan or somebody else do the work. So this tells me right now early that he is confident and ready to push the pace to try to separate it even more. You see the runners are shedding some of their garments there, too, as they go along. That was uh, Dathan Ritzenhine that just took off the, uh, the windbreaker. 
and uh, tossed it aside. And we haven't spoken much about Dathan. You see him there, third from the left of the screen. He has been a bit of a mystery man relative to some of the other runners in this field. There's been an interesting preparation because uh, in the age of the internet, athletes have had to make a decision. Do I let everybody know everything about all of my training or do I remain a little secretive? We've really heard nothing from Ritzenhain since November when he ran a uh, race in, in Central Park uh, before the New York City Marathon, a 5K race. Very open there, talked a lot about his training, and then he's gone silent since, more or less, compared to some of the others who've written blogs, who've given interviews. There's been a constant stream of information, less about Ritzenhain than the others. And you see uh, Meb, as he's called, with uh, Meb on the, the front of his bib there, taking a look behind. And that uh, lead pack of seven has opened up quite a distance on the trailing pack. Really, with the start of Ryan Hall and now Kofleski continuing to push the pace, decisions have had to be made by this lead group. They have put everything in now. They, there's no going back for those in the front pace. They're either going to make it all the way to the finish line at this pace or they're going to fall back terribly, Todd. That's a great point. But the only thing I could see potentially going forward into the, the latter stages, I say mile 15 and 20, if somebody else makes a break, do they make the decision to push back and hold on for two and three? Or do they continue to drive? Because everybody knows, especially these guys know, going into the, mile, the last 10K, that they can run into some serious problems. So will they be cautious or will they keep hammering? Now six in the lead pack with uh, Ryan Hall, Meb Kofleski, Abdi, Abdi Rockman, Brian Olinger, Mo Trafay, and Dathan Ritzenheim. So you mentioned uh, Olinger, who we see has got the blue shorts. He's in the back of the field now, has never run a marathon. In fact, he's never run a half marathon before. It's really a track guy, 10,000 meter runner. Uh, he's run some good road races, but this is completely uncharted territory for him. And I think what Brian's looking at, he ran the 2807 for 10,000 meters. Him and his coach, I believe, Robert Gary at Ohio State, said, you know, let's just give this a shot. I mean, no pressure on you. Just work out hard. We'll do a great program to get you ready for Houston and see what you can do. So I think he's throwing all cards in, and he's going to go as long as he can possibly go and, and see what happens. Ryan Hall has regained the lead, that lead pack of six. And you see on the right, uh, the women with Davila still in front there. Desi Davila, and uh, as you guys mentioned, the pace for the women picking up now as well. So the men and women on the course, the Olympic Marathon Trials in Houston. Next Sunday, fierce rivals meet again as Alex Ovechkin leads the Capitals into Pittsburgh to take on the Penguins. That's the NHL Game of the Week next Sunday, 1230 Eastern, only on NBC. Let's check the progress of the women now in the Marathon Olympic Trials. And a lead pack of about eight at the moment. And as they continue their run, we look at uh, Amy Hastings there with the uh, yellow top. And the long socks, the sunglasses. They call her Little Dina because of her idol, Dina Castor. Being called Little Dina, I, it's, I mean, they're huge shoes to fill, for sure. Uh, but I'm going to do everything I can to try and get there. Um, she's been helping me so much along the way. And, yeah, I think I, a big part of it was our debut marathon times were pretty close in time. Um, so if I could come anywhere close to what she's done, I would be so happy. So, yeah, it's, it's huge, a huge compliment. And you see both Amy and Dina running uh, side by side there in that lead pack. Uh, I have a feeling, though, if it comes down to that uh, fight for the third or and last spot on the team, though, that friendship kind of goes by the boards. Yeah, I think they have a love-hate relationship when it comes <laughs> down to that final spot, up or, or if it does, to that third place. But, you know, and, and with Amy's uh, career right now, she's had a heck of a 2011. She PR'd pretty much at every distance. And that's one thing about the marathon that we really haven't touched on. You know, a lot of guys can have credentials or ladies can have credentials from three, four, five years ago. But it really comes down to what they've done in the last 12 months to get ready for, for the for the Olympic trials and, and Amy's running hot right now. She's really confident and she looks really smooth and strong right now. 
It's got to be comforting for the two of them who train regularly together to be running side yeah. by side in Olympic trials. It allows you to relax. And I asked Amy, what is your most important Olympic memory? And she said, sophomore in college, watching Dina win her silver, or her bronze medal in the Olympic Games in Athens. That was the most enduring Olympic memory. So now here they are in the Olympic trials together. There's the lead group. Top five of that lead group, which is nine as I count there. Katie McGregor is also in that pack. Of course, a lot has changed for Dina since 2004. Uh, had a chance to meet her 10-month-old daughter, Piper Bloom, yesterday. Yeah. And uh, she said it's very motivated to have Piper Bloom here. She's doing some scrapbooking. Uh, she knows Piper Bloom won't remember this race uh, as a 10-month-old, but she can look back at the scrapbook that memorializes uh, this important event in their family's life. So nine in the lead pack for the women. And for the men on the left, the lead pack now down to five. Brian Olinger has dropped back. So it is Ryan Hall. Abderrahman, Ritzenhain, Kaflesky, and Trefay, the top five in that lead pack. And the pace is just staying on us. I mean, they're right at 450, which is sub 207. And, and your major players are there. And, and Craig, you talked about it a few minutes ago. There is no turning back at this point. I think, I think that you know, everyone knows that the team's coming out of these guys, and, and they don't want to back off. Well, I wouldn't be quite as confident as you that the team will necessarily come from this group because this is, for some of these guys, potentially a suicide pace. When you look at what their personal bests are, they're going to have to step up big time to maintain this pace and not fall completely apart. There is the chance that somebody, somebody could sneak up from behind if more than two, more than, uh, two of these guys fall apart. We'll see who's right at the end. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lead pack of five. They went by a water station there. And Ryan Hall has been jockeying back and forth for the lead, but he took the lead after the start. He's been right there, either on the lead or just off it for the entire way and uh, starting to separate out to only a five in the lead pack now. And we'll see if, uh, as Craig says, someone does surprise with a late kick or rather the Olympic team, the top three, will come from this lead pack of five. One of the inter interesting things about Ryan is that his personal best is so far superior to the rest of the field. He actually has some room uh, to, to play a little bit with the pace. He likes to vary the pace in a race. He doesn't necessarily like to be a guy who runs an even pace throughout. And surging, of course, makes the others think a little bit. Every time he picks the pace up and pushes, and I notice he's also wandered a little bit around the course, uh -huh. uh, it makes the others think, you know, more about what's their state of fitness and what's he doing. And I saw Dathan, you know, a few miles back when Ryan was going in and out of the road, he kind of put his hand up to him, and then there was another part where Mo almost tripped over him when he was going side to side. But I think that's kind of a psychological uh, game that Ryan can play with the field because he's in there going, look, I can go side to side, I can go, I can do what I want right now, I'm controlling this race. Ryan Hall, former NCAA champ at 5,000 meters for Stanford University. And there's the uh, the women back in the picture on the right. Still looks like nine in that lead pack with Desiree Davila out in front. And they're now running miles on the women's side in the low 520s. Very different from the start of the race where they were over six minutes. and. Uh, obviously, all of these women are capable at this point in the race of maintaining that pace, uh, but not necessarily for the rest of the race, all of them. So Davila knows and is confident that she can do that. That's the practice pace that she's been running, and she's just making it, as you said earlier, Todd, an honest race at this point. And there are the men, five of them in the lead pack as they continue the Olympic Trials Marathon. The men's Olympic trial race continues, and Abdi Abdirahman has made a little bit of a move there. The lead pack of five, but he's opened up a little distance now. Abdi Abdirahman, originally from Somalia, now a naturalized U.S. citizen, and uh, starting to pull away a bit. What do you make of it? Well, you know, he's a bit of a mystery man in the marathon, better known as a 10,000-meter runner. He's run 208.56 in the marathon, one of the 
best times of, of this group up in the front here. Uh, but he's been inconsistent in the marathon. And frankly, you know, no one was sure what to expect from him. When we saw him the other day, he said he was fit, always has a smile on his face, always is confident. So you're never quite sure how to take that. And, you know, he has, he has phenomenal uh, credentials, you know, from the 5K to the 10K, running low 27s for 10,000 meters and 13-13 for 5,000 meters. So he's got the confidence, but I think what he's doing, the pressure's off of him as well. I mean, nobody's really been talking about him. He's been under the radar, um, and he jumped out there for a little bit, probably just to test the waters to see if these guys would go with him. But he looks extremely confident right now and smooth and relaxed. See as they pass the 20K mark, and uh, he's back with the lead pack of five now let's check in with lewis johnson lewis all right tom well these uh, runners are really uh just making their way down this course right now they've lost the energy of the crowd out here but abdi and this mm -hmm. yes. pack of four has really just pulled alongside each other look as though they're just kind of working together ryan hall continues to impress me out here as he goes with what he said he would do early just be relaxed and stay in the pack this first half marathon and then make some moves later on but abdi mixing it up out here and now we're getting to uh, some of this crowd here giving us uh, some energy for these guys running this Olympic Trials Marathon. All right, Lewis, Ritzenhain moving alongside Abdi Rachman with uh, Hall back in third. And then Kaflesky and Trofei completing the top five. And I think what you're seeing there is Abdi about 100 yards back there kind of turned to Ryan and, and, and laughed a little bit. And, and sometimes that can be a little bit of a psychological game, too, that they're playing. Like, look, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Here we are cruising along at 450 pace, sub 207, two minutes below event record time. And it's kind of a way to get in each other's head. I don't think you're seeing any teamwork at all. I think you're just seeing some, some psychological games playing back and forth. And Abdi's just a great story at age 35. You know, his family came from Somalia in 1990 due to the civil war in that country uh, became a citizen in in the year 2000 and talking about who people idolized he idolized the american 10,000 meter runner billy mills who won the 1964 10,000 meters used to watch the film about billy mills's life almost every day and when he made his first olympic team in 2000 who gave him his medal that sent him on the way to the 2000 olympics billy mills and while we check in with the women now, the lead pack is down to eight. Adriana Nelson has dropped back from that lead pack, so it's eight now. The women with Selena Burla in front at the moment. Burla is quite a story herself, 27 years old. She was diagnosed in 2010 with synovial sarcoma in her right hamstring had an operation which her doctors feared would mean that she would actually never run again. Uh, she came back that fall in the New York City Marathon, ran a 2.37, and that's where she qualified for this Olympic trials. By a water station, and uh, Berla, quite the story, just the fact that she is even competing, much less uh, leading the race at the moment. So Selena Berla leading the pack of eight on the women's side of the competition. Also includes Davila, Flanagan, McGregor, Caster. Kara Goucher in that field, and we talked about uh, Dina Caster having her 10-month-old daughter here. Kara Goucher has her 15-month-old son, Cole, here. And I think here is an interesting story, you know, as far as changing coaches in the last, you know, four or five months and, and jumping up and training with Shalane. I think, you know, we, we talked to her at the press conference and, and she's really stepped up her game because she thought in the past that she was doing everything possible to be the best athlete she could be. And then she goes, you know what, I'm really not doing the things I need to do. And, and it got her a little bit more focused. And I think, you know, with her being a mom now, and it also gave her a little bit more structure. And, you know, she, she feels like she can do some damage here today. Uh, in the streets of Houston. There you see Kara with the uh, sunglasses on, making her way in along that lead pack. Dina Castor there with the uh, hat on. Katie McGregor in that top group, who's been fourth, the worst possible spot in the 10,000 at the last two Olympic trials, hoping for better results here. So the women, eight in the lead pack, and the men, five up front. 
as the Marathon Olympic trials continue. Olympic marathon trials continue, and the men starting to really separate now. As you see, that lead pack of five has separated into three and two as both Ritzenhain and Trafay have dropped back a little bit behind a Hall, Abdirachman, and Kaflesgi. And I think that situation, I mean, the pace has been pretty consistent at 450 per mile. The gap is there, but again, are these guys making choices now that could affect later on in the race? I mean, is Dathan thinking, you know, is Dathan going, I need to push off, I need to back off of this so I can be ready for the last 10,000 meters? This is a record pace, right? 207.37 pace right now, so it's a minute and a half below uh, below the 20902 that was set in 2008 by Ryan Hall for the event record. So they're flying. I mean, majority of the race was running under sub, you know, sub 207 pace, so they're getting after it. Well, let's put it in perspective. You look at the personal best of the leaders. Hall has run 204.58. Ritzenhain 210 is his personal best. Abdi 208.56, as I said earlier, and Meb 209.13, which he ran at the ING New York City Marathon. Trefay, who's, who's trailing the field, has never completed a marathon. So for them to be in the 207 territory is brand new territory for everybody in the race except Hall. Course record here in Houston, 207.37. And the cheers of the crowd as the men around that corner. Pretty good crowd there as they come by the start finish line you saw Ritzenhain uh, slip a little bit there as he went around that corner I mean it is an advantage all of the runners told us that it's an advantage to run on a loop course their friends and family will be There's there the slip yep and you saw him slip there it's an advantage to be able to run by your friends and family have people cheering for you you know the course you feel comfortable on it uh, on the other hand there are quite a few turns Todd on this on this course in, including a fairly sharp little uh, deviation the, that they make at one point in the race. I think these guys are just so knowledgeable about where, where they're going to race and you know going back when they when they first designated Houston as being the spot that the Olympic trials these guys do so much research and, and know exactly where every turn and know where every little incline yeah there's going to be some spots where they might get you know Buff, you know, running up against each other but, and fighting. But again, the turns could play a part there. But these guys know what they're doing, and, and they're going to stay away, try to stay away from trouble. They've just passed 15 miles, and Ryan Hall still leads that group. It's essentially a group of four now as Trefay has dropped back. There you see Trefay in the back trying to keep up. As we said, he's the really a uh, newcomer to elite marathoning and uh, 20 miles you said if you could make 20 miles you might be able to go and challenge and uh, just from a look of it he may not make it to 20 with the lead group there's the uh, lead group on the women's side the women just passed 10 miles into their race and Desiree Davila continues to lead that group the lead pack and in that lead pack is a Katie McGregor, a University of Michigan grad. And, you know, she's been in, uh, this is her third Olympic trials. And in the last two, she's finished fourth to 10,000 meters. So I'm kind of pulling for her to do something special here today because I wouldn't want to see her uh, finish in that fourth spot again. Davila and Hastings, the former uh, roommates, teammates at Arizona State, talking to each other we saw a few moments ago. So perhaps they have some strategy they're going to pull out here and you see the lead pack on the women's side just past 10 miles you know there's a little bit of a reality show feel to both of these races that you mentioned that Davila and uh, Hastings were college teammates uh, Flanagan and Goucher training together Castor and Hastings training together so you know these are people who know one another well they know one another as as athletes as people uh, they bring all of their life experience here, uh, but they, they can't help but feel emotion about the fact that they're running with people that they're so close to in different ways.
Todd, uh, when you hear the crowd cheering and you make your way along this course, that has to, to lift your spirits a bit, huh? It, it really is an important part of it. Yeah, I think, the, you know, they're, they're running through the streets and they're seeing family, they're seeing friends, they're seeing their coaches. And, and I guarantee you, a lot of the coaches are in certain certain landmarks around the course that saying, look, I'm going to be there and give you a little bit extra support, tell you what you're looking like, maybe back you off or, or give you a little bit extra push. So it's definitely a big advantage, I think, for the, for the, for the runners. Desiree Davila on the left. There's Shalane Flanagan on the right. Dina Castro with the hat on. Kara Goucher, Amy Hastings, Katie McGregor. All familiar faces in U.S. women's distance running. And the men, Abby Rockman now jockeying back in front of Hall with Ritzenhain and Kaplesky there as well. You know, it's a, it's a good word that you use there, jockeying, because given how fast the men are running, I'm shocked by how much they're moving around on the course, how much they're shifting their position, how much they're shifting the lead. You would have thought that they would have enjoyed just settling in at that pace, but there's none of that going on. As Todd said earlier, they're trying little moves, they're testing one another. The women are in a much more kind of rational, reasonable, uh, even, even pace along the way. Ryan Hall leads the men. Desiree Davila, the women from Houston. The men continuing in the Olympic marathon trials. The lead pack of four, led by Abdi, Abdi Rahman. Ryan Hall in second place, you see. Ritzenhain and Meb Kofleski. So that's the lead pack of four in the men's competition. And only three can make up the Olympic team. There's the chase pack. They're uh, over a minute behind the leaders. Do you see anyone there that catches your eye that might be able to close in the latter stages of the race? Brett Goucher, uh, he trains at the McMillan Group out of Flagstaff. I mean, he was one of kind of one of the pre-race favorites on the fringe, and and I think if something really happens bad after that extreme pace up front, I mean, he's a really smart, intelligent guy. He's, he's run the two, you know the 211 range, and so he could be that guy to be able to nab that third spot if they start fading off the front. What's going on now is that the chase pack, which is about a minute and 15, minute 20 behind, it's now running the same pace as the lead pack, right around five minute miles. So if the lead pack starts slowing, and you saw Abdi try to push it a little bit up front to keep from slowing down, the, the, back, the pack behind could start to catch up, but they've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I went, they went from the sub-207 two, pace to the 207 mid, so 207.30. But even that chase pack, they're in over their heads a little bit because they're running 209, 209 30, which is their best time in their life. So they need to be cautious. But again, it's going to be really interesting this last 10K, what that initial pace has done to these first four runners. So there's your lead pack of four, including Meb Kofleski, who talked to us about race strategy. Strategy or tactics in the marathon are crucial. I mean, you have to make that decision as you go on. It could be 5K into the race, or it could be 6 miles down to the race, or it could be 18 miles around the race, or it could be the last mile. That's what the beauty of a marathon is, and you have to be able to make that decision. There's no coach telling you to make this and that. It's just, you know, they're not inch above the shoulders. And you have to have your intuition to be able to make that decision and plan accordingly. You know, Bev told us that uh, he and his coach, uh, Bob Larson, have plan A to plan Z. <laughs> but it's up to Meb himself to decide, you know, does he have enough fuel to make the move to get where he needs, needs to get in the race? And, and, uh, and Abdi is going, to stay, he's going crazy right now. This shows you how, how excited he is. Here we are, 18 miles into the race. He's running 450 pace, and he's trying to get the crowd <laughs> jacked up. <laughs> Doing a little cheerleading as well, so... Looks like Ritzenhain is dropping further behind there as it's uh, down to three and the women starting to separate some two. Davila still in front with Flanagan there and Goucher. One, two, three that they've lost. Uh, Katie McGregor has dropped back from that lead group. And uh, there she is in the, the back of it. And Dina Castor seems to be having trouble covering this move. Amy Hastings in between Dina Castor and the lead group. Hastings has been kind of yo-yoing back and forth towards the front. It at one point, Todd, it looked like she was going to fall off the pace. Now she seems to have gotten back into her racing. 
And really, since about three miles ago, Desi's really dictating the pace, and she's dropped it from the 5.30 type pace to five low 5.20. So that's the reason you're starting to see it string out and, and really taking this pack down to four. So Shalane Flanagan, Amy Hastings, Desiree Davila, Kara Goucher, the top four women at the moment. Remember now, only three can go. And the men, looks like Ritzenhain has dropped further back. So the top three now, will they be the three that go to London? There's just such a long amount of race to go. And, and again, I, I ran five marathons in my career, and I know how bad it is for you if you go out too hard. And these guys just didn't go out, you know, at 208, 209 pace. I mean, they really went after it in the, in the first 10 miles. So Ritzenhain might be trying to back off a little bit to think he's got to reserve some in his gas tank for those la for the last 10,000 meters. But it's probably not a good thing that the, the strings broke at, the, at this point. So three of them running stride for stride with Ritzenhain trying to keep up in fourth place. You know, when we talked to Alberto Salazar yesterday, Ritzenhain's coach, he felt he was in the shape of his life. Uh, his workouts had, had shown that he was ready to run, you know, certainly this pace, 208 pace, if, if that's what they fall to as they're slowing down a little bit. Uh, but this is a rough moment right here, and it's unlikely that he's going to reclose this if, if he lets them get too far ahead. All right, approaching 20 miles, let's check in with Lewis. Well, Tom, everybody handles pressure uh, in a different way, and it's been really interesting to see Abdi Rockman as he's waved his arms, begging the crowd for some noise and energy, and, and he's gotten that from them. And as I take a close look at everyone, Ryan Hall looks to me to be the most relaxed as he has all raced so, so far. Uh, notice that Meb Kofleski has reached for his left thigh a couple times. Not sure what's going on there. But as this race continues, hydration is big as they hit one of those three stations around this course. Tom? Saw, saw Kofleski and Abdi Rockman bump a little bit there a uh, few strides ago. And those three continue to pull away from Ritzenhain. Hall, there's Ritzenhain trying to keep up now back to fourth place. And, you know, speaking of the strategy, as we pass 30K, I think you see Meb doing exactly what he was talking about yesterday, the, the plan A to Z, as he had mentioned. And, uh, you know, he's tucked in behind. He's touched the lead a few times, but he's doing a veteran thing. He's like, look, if I'm going to make this team, I'm going to let these guys do the work. And then when if I need to make my move when we get into that last 10K, then I'll try to push it when I need to. But he's not going to waste any extra energy, and he's going to let Ryan and, and Abdi do the work right now. So Hall and Abdi Rockman exchanging glances there side by side taking the measure of each other. Well, Meb, you know, was very confident about one thing, and that was the fact that he has more experience in the marathon and more experience in championship-style marathons than, than anybody else. He says, I've always been a racer, not someone who goes for a time. And his personal best of 209.13, very modest by modern marathon standards, but he has that Olympic silver medal, which none of the other guys in the race have. And then when you look at Abdi, I mean, with the Olympic experience of the world, World Championship experience. I mean, he's a guy that you have to look out for too, with that with being a veteran in, in the marathon. And now four in the lead pack for the women. Dina Castor has dropped back. There's Castor with a hat on. And uh, Cherubon Bauckham also dropping back along with Castor. So the four up front: Shalane Flanagan, Desiree Davila, Amy Hastings, and Kara Goucher. Goucher was very honest in the run-up to the race that her preparation did not go as well as she had hoped. She wished she had another month to train. She felt if she'd had one more month with her new coach, Jerry Schumacher, that they would have had it perfect. Uh, but she was game. She was ready to get in there. She knew this was the day, and she was going to give it her best. And the men, Abdi Rachman and Ryan Hall now. And where's Meb? There's Meb back into the picture. <laughs> Here's what happened a couple of moments ago. A little step, and uh, then uh, Hall, who had stepped on the heel, it looked like, of Abdi Rockman with a hand out to stabilize him a little bit. Some sportsmanship shown there, and yeah. disaster avoided. You know, this makes, uh, this makes Todd's point well, that uh, Meb was completely out of that mess. He wasn't involved at all. 
uh, those things happen in a race. But as I said earlier, it's bizarre the number of those incidents that there have been given how few people there are in the lead. And that's what's crazy. I mean, you have the whole street to run, and these guys have been bumping and hitting each other <laughs> yeah. like it's a football that's game right. <laughs> over the first 15 miles. It's like, give me some space. And I don't know if that's having sportsmanship or like, I'm, gonna, I'm about to grab you in a second if you don't get out of my way. That men's group, uh, an all Pac-10 group, isn't it? Abdi Rockman from Arizona, Kaflesky from uh, UCLA, Hall from Stanford. And uh, on the right, the women, now the lead pack of four. So things separating out. Top three go to London. The women's race in the Olympic marathon trials down to a lead pack of four at the moment. Desiree Davila on the right is the leader. Shalane Flanagan, Kara Goucher, Amy Hastings. That's the top four. Remember, only three comprise the U.S. Olympic marathon team. So one of those, if that is in fact the uh, lead pack that holds together, will not go. Chasing them, you see the uh, Dina Castor and Cherubon Bauckham trying to keep pace and uh, considerably behind the lead pack of four at the moment. And over on the men's side, there are the top three. Will they be the three that go to London? Abdi Abdi Rockman, Med Kaflesgi, and Ryan Hall. Top three. And opening up quite a bit of distance. You see way back there, Ritzenhain just can't keep up at the moment. You know, once you get past 20 miles, a lot of things start happening. And, you know, the, the, the golden rule is, you know, you kind of try to jog through 20 and then really race the last 10,000 meters. And, you know, Abdi just a couple miles ago was giving the crowd the high fives and yelling and screaming. And you're starting to see him grimace a little bit because the, the quads can cramp up. And there's a lot of things that's going to go on in the next in the next five miles. They have about four and a half, five miles to go. So. I don't know. It's, it, it's going to be really interesting. Well, that's a great point. Their 20th mile was a five-minute mile. The first time they ran a five-minute mile, they were under five minutes prior to that. Now they're running a little over five minutes per mile, but they've put more than 20 seconds on Dathan Ritzenhain. So they're in a pretty good position right now if they can hold it together. And Craig, what I was mentioning to you is it's like you want, at this point in the race, do you work together? I mean, you know, before we were talking about, no, nah, you know, where it's me versus you, me versus you. But, you know, in this situation, you know, let's just get to the last mile together so we can establish our spot on the team and then push it the last half mile. Ritson High now 24 seconds back. So somebody will have to uh, make a mistake up front for him to make the team, correct? At this point, he's just holding on. I mean, he, he ran a 5.12 mile when they were running a five minute mile. So in a single mile, uh, half of that distance was established. And it's a, it's a tough moment for him. As Todd points out, these guys have the luxury of running with other right. people. He's completely on his own. No one near him behind. And, and obviously he's getting further and further behind these guys who are ahead. But I will say in Ritz's defense, I mean, he is one tough kid. I mean, he put some, he put some efforts together in the past that you, it's just unbelievable how he can rally and just and get after it. So he's going to hang in there. He knows he put thousands and thousands of miles in to get ready for today. So I'm sure he's going to grind all the way to the finish line. Abdi Rockman, Kaflesgi, Hall, still showing the way. And it is interesting to note that they have bumped each other several times, uh, despite the fact there are only three of them running together. Here's the uh, last five mile pace. And as expected, they are slowing down after going out so fast. Meantime, the women have just passed 16 miles, and it appears that Amy Hastings has dropped back. So it's Davila, Flanagan, and Goucher. Hastings now has dropped back, so the women now are down to three leaders at the moment. You see Hastings just between them there. He's dropped back in the last few strides. And Davila is she's out there laughing at this point too. You know, almost like the you know Abdi a few, a few minutes ago when he was giving the high fives. But you know, I think 
But Davila, with her experience in the marathon, she ran her first marathon in 07 and 243. She's improved every single time out, all the way to Boston this past year, running 224, I believe, 222. I mean, so she's got the experience. You look at a Shalane Flanagan, this is her second marathon, play extreme talent on the shorter distances, but she's kind of going into uncharted territories too, because that first marathon in New York, she said, oh, this is cake. But I don't know. I mean, the second marathon can kind of be a wake-up call for you. It's interesting to see uh, Shalane Flanagan holding a, a water bottle as we take a look at Amy Hastings. Hastings, as we said earlier, had been falling off the pace and working her way back up, falling off the pace and working her way back up. What's tough for her is the two leading women, Flanagan and Davila, uh, both told us they wanted to keep the pace going. And when they've reached this point of the race, they've just been knocking off these 520, 525, 527 miles, and it's hard to work your way back up when the pace is, is relentless like that. Anyway, talking about uh, Flanagan running with the bottle, she told us in New York she only drank once the entire race. She took her water bottle at the first water stop and then didn't drink the rest of the way. It's not hot today, but I think sometimes the, the, the runners, they just want to have a feel of, of liquid in their mouth. They want to guard against, uh, you know, dehydration late in the race, even though they're not sweating a lot. And it's the rehearsal thing. I mean, when and here comes Hastings as we're as we're saying she had dropped back. Here comes Hastings there on the on the right of the screen. So back with the lead pack of four of the women and the men still three. And in fourth place, Ritzenhain. That's the uh, worst spot to be in, of course, just missing making the team. And you see as we pan forward how far back he is from the three leaders close to 30 seconds behind now so that appears to be done the, the chase pack by the way two minutes behind at the latest checkpoint so i have to admit i was wrong <laughs> the, the the three guys are very likely to come from that lead pack that we saw earlier in the race as todd said anything can happen and you told me a story about one of your marathons where you literally went from running sub five minute miles to a 540 mile uh, in the in the blink of an eye yeah, I was in Chicago in my debut marathon I you know I thought I felt great through 22 miles and next thing you know I'm running a minute slower so it can happen and you can bonk and you have no control over it so a lot of things can still happen in those in, in these three guys in the in the last three and a half four miles and as we check in with the women again a Amy Hastings whom we said was falling back off the pace now has regained the lead and Craig, you said a moment ago, she's been doing this. She's been falling back and then coming back again. And she uh, just did it in dramatic fashion here to take the advantage after it looked like she was going to be dropping back. This is really impressive, though, because as Todd was saying earlier, you get into tough moments in a marathon and you really have to make a decision as to what you're going to do. Uh, clearly, she was having a moment. If it was a moment of reflection and planning, maybe that's what it was. But, it, you know, you had to, she looked like she was in trouble. So for her to come back to the front and now dominate the pace, I think she just wants to do something positive to, to put her stamp on the race. Whether she can make it all the way or not, we'll see. So Hastings leading the women and the men. Will these three be going on to London? Looks that way now. Next week, the Canadiens welcome the New York Rangers to Montreal to kick off four straight nights of the NHL on the all-new NBC Sports Network. U.S. Olympic marathon trials continue in Houston, Texas. The men have less than four miles remaining in their race. Med Kaflesky leading Ryan Hall with Abdi, Abdi Rockman dropping back a little bit in third place. Top three make the U.S. Olympic team. This is really an amazing story, Meb Kaflesky, 36 years old. Four years ago at the Olympic trials, a, a real disappointment for him that he didn't make it, didn't get a chance to come back and try to win another medal. As you see his family looking on, he's got three daughters uh, in attendance. And for him to be in the top three and leading the pace with less than four miles to go, very impressive. Javier Rockman third place and falling a little further behind Hall and Kofleski. 
And this is what I was talking about. I mean, if Dathan can stay in there, Ritzenhain in, in fourth, and I know he's fading off, but he's just a tough, gritty runner. And if he gets a sniff and, and sees Abdi starting to come back to him, he's got a real shot of nabbing that third spot. That's the, that's the, the great thing about the Olympic trials. You've got to take it all the way to the finish line, and so many things can happen in a marathon. Lapping some of the uh, women runners there. And you saw Meb's parents uh, in the audience. He was born in Eritrea. His father, in an interest of bringing his family out of Eritrea, walked 500 miles through the desert, filtering water through his clothes to get to freedom in Chad, later made it to Italy, brought the family there, and then eventually to San Diego, where Meb grew up and first ran. And he went to UCLA, as you said, Tom, earlier, but has crafted really an amazing professional running career since. That's his father, Rusam, and his mother, Awatash, who are watching from the stands as their son leads this race back in fourth place. Nathan Ritzenhain hoping that Abderrahman continues to fade and he might be able to nab that third spot. The last mile that we have record of is Ritzenhain still running about five seconds per mile slower than Abdi was running, which is going to make it hard for him to close that gap. But this is the advantage, in a way, of this loop course. There are people all over the course who are able to say to Abdi, hey, this is how much you've gapped on Ritzenhain, and to Ritzenhain, this is how much you've got to make up. And this is the moment of truth for both of them. And at this point, you can see all the runners looking back on how far, how much further do we have? We've got three miles to go, two miles to go. They're just, they're just wishing that they could get the finish line gets there sooner. It really is interesting to contrast the men's and women's race. And we said it earlier, the men at this point really just hanging on as you see their miles slow mile by mile. The women, the racing has yet to really start for that four person group up front. They're feeling one another out and there's going to be some fireworks over the last few miles. And really with the training, it's it, th at this point in the race, you're hurting so bad. And, and what I used to do again at the 24 mile mark of a marathon, you really try to draw in all the hard work you had to put in, all the dedication, all the sacrifice. Most of these guys at, the, at this level have, have already put in 40,000 miles in their career to get to today. So they're trying to push away the pain. And, and you know, even on the women's side, Shalane mentioned it, she trains to strictly try to push her pain threshold to that next level. And in and, and the last four miles, the last two miles of a marathon, you definitely need to be able to deal with a lot of pain. You know, Ryan Hall said it well when we, we spoke with him. He said, running is an art. He said, you got to be in touch with your body at all times and make that critical decision. Is this the time to make a move? He's been in touch with his watch, I noticed a lot. He keeps checking the time as if there's not enough information out on the course. But he certainly is thinking the whole time about when he's going to make that move. And Ritson Hein continues to uh, labor along in fourth place. Hoping one of those three leaders will falter and he can get the final spot to make the Olympic team. Right now, Abde Rockman is the one that's seemed to be uh, dropping back. They've just passed 24 miles. And if you look at Dathan's splits, he's really not slowing down like a, it went 5-12, then 5-12, then 5-13. So he's kind of staying steady. If Abdi Abdi Rockman starts to come back and he starts really fading, I'm sure Dathan's going to kick into the, trying to start think of a track race like, I'm going to, I have to hammer this last mile. I have to try to close the gap. So that, that's a pretty good indicator that Dathan's got a little bit left in the tank because his mile splits aren't separating so far apart. So at 24 miles, they were on pace to run around 208.40 for the full marathon, which would be a personal best uh, for Meb. And it's, it's funny, he and I have joked over the years. He's always been a guy, as, as he said earlier, who's a racer. He likes to race. He hasn't necessarily run on the fastest courses, but he's done well when he runs. And now he's putting a little bit of a gap on Ryan Hall. And that's surprising. I mean, you know, everybody talk about Meb coming into this thing, running a marathon in New York City just a few months back and then having a little problem with his foot with a blister. And now here he is putting the hammer down with a mile and a half to go and, and getting a little separation from Ryan. These guys, of course, uh, also know one another well from the years that they both trained at Mammoth Lakes, California. So uh, certainly they know their strengths. They know one another's weaknesses. Let's check back in with the women. And still a lead pack of four. Last time we checked, Amy Hastings had uh, taken the lead. Now it's Davila again with 
Flanagan, Goucher, and Hastings, the lead pack of four. And Davila all day today has almost looked robotic. I mean, every time you see her, her head stand low, I mean, her shoulders are low, she looks relaxed. When she needs to make a move, she makes it, and especially at the beginning when she said, I need to get on this pace and push it, and she's kept it honest the whole day, and she looks smooth and relaxed. You know, Shalane's reacting, Kara looks great. Uh, ugh, th this race is tough to call with four in there for three spots. And speaking of three spots, trying to hold on to that third spot on the men's side is Kofleski leads it. Now Hall a little distance back in second, and Abdi Rockman in third place and laboring, struggling. Will he be able to hold on? Will he be able to punch his ticket to London? That's the drama that remains over the last couple of miles in the men's Olympic marathon trials. Men's Olympic marathon trials, they just hit mile 25 in their 26.2 mile race. And Meb Kaflesky is the leader, 36 years old, in front and with a chance, a shot at the Olympic trials record, which is 209.02, set by Ryan Hall at the 2008 Olympic trials. And Todd, I actually think he looks better now than he did two or three miles ago. I think getting into the lead, knowing that the finish was close, a gap, putting a gap on Ryan Hall, he's got a little extra pep in his step. Yeah, again, and I think I think when he's coming down this last half mile, it's it's really, you know, the, just the, all the work that you put in and everything that you had to put into this moment. And now he's going to be able to cherish it and come down this last half and know he, he's going to make his third Olympic team. Abdi Rockman in third place, 25 seconds ahead of Ritzenhain in fourth place, battling for the final spot. That's a lot for Ritzenhain to make up in, in what's, you know, less than two miles now at this point for those two. There's Ryan Hall. He's in second place. He's the defending Olympic trials champion. And there is your leader, Meb Kofleski. In this last mile or so, he has begun to really pull away. You see them lapping some of the slower women at the moment. Men and women on the course at the same time. And I think it was a motivating factor for Meb as everyone was talking about Ryan Hall and here Meb is coming with a silver medal from 2004 and really, you know, not giving Meb as much respect and maybe and that was a motivating thing for him and trained to say, look, everybody's talking about him. I'm going to come in there and show him that I can put down the hammer and I can do something. And, and as we're seeing here today, he looks he looks fantastic. Strate strategically, he ran almost flawlessly the whole day. You know, he took he touched the lead one time early and then when he decided to make it at 24 and a half and really put the gap on Ryan here we are and and he's 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 cruising in Nathan Ritzenhain in fourth place for the men he's about 25 seconds behind Abdi Rockman for the third and final Olympic team spot Kofleski and on the left you see in the distance there Hall Running 1-2 at the moment. So Meb Kofleski, 36 years old. Many thought uh, he was past his prime. And here he is looking good, not only leading in the Olympic trials for the marathon, but with a chance of setting the trials record. And it is an amazing story, as Todd said, 69 days ago, he ran the New York City Marathon. Had a good race there, his personal best, but people said, hey, you know, your sixth place finish, that was good. That's an achievement in your career, but you're jeopardizing your Olympic trials performance. He missed some training time because of a injured foot coming off of the New York City Marathon. And people said, well, now you've missed training. But one thing he said to us when we spoke with him, Todd, he said, you know, I was in superb condition going into New York. I lost a little training time, but I'm in superb condition again. I was able to get back quickly once I got over that foot injury. And I have to admit, I was one of those guys. I mean, I really thought that he couldn't come back and, and get back into training fast enough to put together uh, a training base to do, to do well here. And, and so he definitely, uh, he definitely showed me. Abdi Rockman, again, still holding third, hoping to get that final spot behind Kofleski and Hall.
I think Avni is, is holding in there well enough right now. He's probably running into 515 range for the for this mile, uh, and he's looking straight ahead. He's got enough in the tank, I think, to hold Dathan off at this point. There's not enough. There's not enough road left for Dathan to, Dathan to try to close the gap. You know, it's funny. We talked about him not having as much consistency in his performances over the last two or three years, but he did win a U.S. 20K title back in New Haven in September. And uh, Meb has already started the celebration with a little fist pump or two. Every step now being buoyed by the crowd. And he looks very strong. He's even starting to get the American flag to lead the American team to London. This is essentially a victory lap for him as he's all by himself coming in the final stages of this Olympic trials race, interacting with the crowd. And he turns for home with a big lead here in the Olympic trials. Meb Kaflesky, 36 years old, about to win the Olympic trials race and make his third U.S. Olympic team. And there he is. Just missed the trials record. Perhaps that celebrating kept him from, set, from setting the record. But he wins decisively. Ryan Hall will cross the finish line in second place. The defending trials champion. He's on his way to London. And just holding on. Holding off Ritzenhain for third. It appears that Abdi Rockman, Ritzenhain is trying to catch him in the final stride. Just not going to happen. Abdi, Abdi Rockman is the third and final member of the U.S. men's Olympic marathon team. Ritzenhain in fourth. That really was a compelling race, Tom, from start to finish. Ryan Hall taking it out in the beginning, sort of solving the issue for the rest of the field as to whether it was going to be a fast race today. Really fast race early going, which made for some hard running towards the end. But I'm so proud of you. I mean, all I can say is wow. I mean, the whole day today, I mean, they went out so fast. They went out, you know, 207 mid pace, separated the pack early. Ryan stuck to his game plan. You know, Mep kind of being the quote unquote underdog for the day, him pulling out a victory to make his third team. Uh, you know, Dathan hanging in there, gritty performance and, and barely missing out a spot on the team. And, and Abdi really totally under the radar is, is making his team. Mr. And you look at the emotion, Ritzenhain, he knows he just missed it, the worst Listen, possible spot, fourth, running so well, but just missing, making the U.S. Olympic team. There's Meb with his baby, Johanna. Johanna made the trip to Houston to see her dad perform. His wife, Jordanus, is here too. His parents were here, as we showed you earlier. It was a compelling performance, as you said, Craig, and Todd, as you noted, that uh, it, uh, is the third Olympic team for Meb. Ryan makes his second team, and Abdi Rockman, his fourth U.S. Olympic team. Kaflesky, Hall, Abdi Rockman, one, two, three. The women, however, are still on the course, deciding their Olympic team, and we're down to a pack of three again. Shalane Flanagan, Kara Goucher, and Desiree Davila. And we'll see how they finish, who will be going to London on the women's side. We'll decide that when we return to Houston. Aerial shot of Houston, Texas, and the marathon course, the Olympic trials marathon course, the men are in the books, the women still out, approaching 22 miles now. Desiree Davila leads Shalane Flanagan and Kara Goucher. Amy Hastings has dropped back about 45 seconds behind the lead three at the moment. There she is. 
And the men course, the team has been chosen. Meb Kofleski, Ryan Hall, Abdi Abdi Rachman, and there with Lewis Johnson. All right, Tom, thanks so much. Here they are draped in their American flags. And Meb, at age 36, you've made your third Olympic team. What does this moment mean to you? Praise Lord, because, you know, it's tough to make three Olympics just to make one stuff, but to be under my third Olympic, that's all I dreamed of. This race was all about one, two, three, and I was privileged to win, but this guy, I couldn't be happy for Ryan and Abdi to be our teammate, and uh, I, I'm so excited. It's her birthday on Tuesday, oh. so that's, she was born when I was in Houston two years ago. She's going to be two years old, so I just want to make it third Olympic for my girls. And Meb, how strong was your belief that a moment like this could happen when you came to Houston? Honestly, during the race in New York, I said, you know, the pace we were going, I believed in it right then. But then I had a mishaps with the infection, but I really believe in God and people who helped me get here. Hey, there's a book called Run to Overcome. That's what my life has been. I overcame this injury and I made it the team. All right, and the rest of your team is right here to my right, Meb. Congratulations, Ryan. You've made your second Olympic team. What is this experience like? Oh, man, so unreal running out here. You know, the crowd is just going crazy for us. And, you know, to, to make an Olympic team is a big deal. You know, these guys are amazing runners, and I'm just blessed to be in the top three. And how about a quick word on that torrid pace you said early? It was hot uh, really early there. Yeah, you know, I was getting flashbacks when I broke an hour here in the half marathon. I was feeling so good. I was like, you never know what's possible in the day. So, you know, I was airing it out and just, uh, you know, praising God with every step and, and enjoying the day. And Abdi, uh, you, you were something to watch today, but explain your strategy and the way you just enjoy not only the hot pace, but this crowd as you made your team. You know, this, this crowd was amazing. I should like, I, I make this team because of them. They got, they got me so excited. I was like, the first, second loop, I was so excited. So I didn't want to, disapp I didn't want to disappoint them not making the team. But at the same time, it was an amazing race. What a two girls got to be on the team with Ryan and Mev. I remember me and Mev, first team was uh, 2000. I make my fourth Olympic team, it's amazing. So hey, there's not that many people in the US can say they make four Olympic teams. So hey, I'm just glad to be on the team with these two great guys and hopefully we're gonna represent this great country. All right guys, congratulations and we'll see you in London, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Tom. <laughs> and there was Mab crossing the finish line, holding the stars and stripes and then joined by his uh, baby daughter, Johanna, in the uh, winner's circle ceremony with Lewis. Quite a day, they'll both remember. Joanna will see those pictures and uh, her dad can tell her about that great moment. Meanwhile, the women continuing with Davila leading Flanagan and Goucher's drop back a little bit in third place. Top three represent the U.S. Looks like it's going to be these three that will go to London. And I think at this point, I mean, uh, Shalane and, and Davila, I mean, it's going to be those two coming down to that, that home stretch potentially. And, and this is where Davila is going to have to start using her strength because she knows Shalane's a little bit faster coming off of her track time. So if she's going to go for the win, she's going to gradually start pressing the pace to try to get some separation between herself and Shalane going into that final three miles. I think she was listening to you as you said that because she took advantage of a slight downhill to put a little bit of a gap on Shalane Flanagan. And you're right, Flanagan has, you know, uh, American record time in the in the 10,000 meters, but remember that Davila told us that she spent some time this year trying to bring her track times down. She wanted to have better leg speed, better track times, so she'd feel more comfortable in just this condition, uh, just this point in a race. And her coach, Kevin Hansen, reinforced that. He said she doesn't fear the people with good track times anymore because she's run some fast times herself. Yeah, and speaking of those times, I mean, she dropped it down to 1508 and, and down to 3137. So she she did improve. And, and that's what you have to do in the Olympic year. You have to step it up. And she and, and they do re they know who they're running against. So, you know, she did the job. Here she is in the last three miles of the Olympic trials, and now she's gonna now she's gonna see if she can try to put to, put something together to win this thing. There's Hastings in fourth place. She had been among the leaders for most of the race, and then the last few miles has dropped back significantly. She's in fourth place, hoping one of the leaders will collapse for her to make the Olympic team. But right now, the the top three look strong. Davila on the right, Flanagan on the left, with Goucher tracking them. And based what, on what we saw in the men's race where uh, Ritzenheim came so close to catching Abdi right at the end, uh, not that Kara Goucher knows about that. She, she needs to maintain that connection as long as she possibly can because those last miles can be very lonely when someone's trying to catch you from behind. 
And I think this is where the benefit of her changing teams and changing coaches will be in, in training with Shalane, because I'm sure she's been in situations in training and the long sustained efforts, the 20 mile tempo runs where she probably had to chase Shalane. So this is this is old hat for her right now. She's like, I'm, I'm in a training run. I have to keep the gap close. And this is a, a point in the race that she talked about when we spoke with her. She said that she called this the, the lollipop on the course where they do a, a turnaround and they get to see where everyone else is. So she'll see exactly where Amy Hastings is now, just how far behind she is, and that'll give her an ability to make some decisions over the closing part of the race. Flanagan and Davila, 1-2, Goucher third. In Houston, approaching the women are in the 25th miles of, miles of their 26.2-mile race to determine the U.S. Olympic team for the marathon. And it is Desiree Davila on the left, Shalane Flanagan on the right that are 1-2. Kara Goucher and the sunglasses back into third place. And the top three will make the team. In fourth place, Amy Hastings. And Hastings uh, hoping she can catch Kara Goucher for that third and final spot. And you see she has a lot of ground to make up. And I think Kara's just keeping that distance close enough to use these girls to get to that last mile to uh, to make the team. Uh, you know, again, talking about the training and talking about pushing through the pain, you know, Shalane mentioned, you know, every stage of a marathon you have to push through it. And she almost got gap when Desiree took off there for a second. You know, there was a gap formed and you see the grimace across Shalane's face like, I, I can't let her go, I can't let her go, I gotta stick in here and try to win this thing. And Shalane Flanagan has tested Davila a couple of times now for the second time pulling away. Davila worked her way back up alongside before. Uh, this is all a little, you know, shadow boxing right now, I think, but getting ready for the last part of the race. Uh, of course, all three of them know they're going to make the team at this point. That's what really counts. But they all told us before the race they would like to win if possible. Shalane Flanagan, who won the bronze medal at the Beijing Olympics at 10,000 meters. And made her marathon debut in 2010, finishing second in New York. So this is her second marathon, and she has the lead. And this is an impressive performance considering it is only her second marathon. She, she ran intelligently the whole race. You didn't see her pushing the pace very much in the early going. She let the more experienced marathoners worry about that pace. But now she's in the in the zone that she knows well, the closing stages uh, of a 10K or of a 5K. She knows how to put the speed out there when she needs it. The question is, does she have the endurance to have the speed at the end? And it looks like she does at this point. So in her second marathon, she's never won a marathon, and this could be quite the landmark achievement for already an Olympic medalist at 10,000 meters. Well, we said at the top of the show, everyone considered her to be the most talented runner in the field, but having only run one marathon, the, it was a little bit of the unknown for her on a day like this. Of course, she comes from pretty good marathoning stock. Her mother, Cheryl Trewergy, was the world record holder in the marathon back in the early days of women running that distance. Her father was a collegiate runner uh, for the University of Connecticut. And uh, her mother, Cheryl, here taking photos, as she does at a lot of the uh, track and field events around the world. They just passed 25 miles. And Flanagan is uh, pulling away a bit from Davila, while Goucher is holding third. Davila told us that she took tremendous uh, pleasure and, and, and comfort from the fact that one of her former training partners, Brian Sell, had made the 2008 Olympic team. The Hansons group with which she's trained over the last few years uh, has really been good at, at creating a group feeling. And so when one runner does well, the others uh, feed off of that, Todd. And, and she certainly felt confidence for herself knowing that Brian had made an Olympic team four years ago. And I've known Kevin and Keith for years, you know, at the Hanson's Train Group in Rochester Hills, Michigan. And, and they do, they put that environment together, and I'm sure she's in a situation where every day there's a little bit more confidence. And I think that's shown in her marathon performances over, over her career. She continuously gets better. And I think Kevin said it best. He said, 
every time she's going to get a little better, and you're going to see something in Houston where she's just that much better. And, and I think, and I think you're seeing that today. This is Desi's seventh marathon. She grew up in Chula Vista, California. Her family uh, loves soccer, but she chose to be a runner instead, and is engaged to a fellow marathoner, Ryan Linden and hoping here to make her first Olympic team in second behind Shalane Flanagan. She said her first Olympic sport of interest was gymnastics and she used to build her own balance beams. Four years ago, she was in fourth place at the 21 mile mark in the Olympic trials and then faded to 13th. So I know she'd like to be winning this race, but to be on the Olympic team is a great achievement and something that uh, she told us would bring her a great excitement. Kara Goucher still holding third. Kara was on the Olympic team in 2008, finished ninth in the 5,000 meters and 10th in the 10,000. Won the bronze medal at 10,000 meters at the World Championships in Osaka, Japan in 2007. Trains with Shalane Flanagan in Portland. She has a son, uh, Colt. Born in September of 2010, her husband is Adam Goucher, who was an Olympian in 2000 and three-time world championship finalist in the men's 5,000 meters. And Shalane, a grimace of pain crossing her face every now and then, but still comfortably in front. What's funny, she told us that her uh, mantra when running the marathon is cold execution and that she wants to reduce the emotion. And you haven't seen a lot of emotion right. on her face I agree. throughout the race. She's been very composed. And yeah, this is just really impressive for her second marathon in this environment. And I did question that as well as like, can she really come in here in a pressure filled situation and not maybe go too fast at the beginning and, and overextend herself? And, and you had pointed out, I mean, she really ran strategic better than anyone today. I mean, she stayed when she, she moved when she needed to move and she stayed back when she needed to stay back. And, and now, and now she's seeing, uh, now she's going to see an Olympic trials victory. Flanagan Davila Goucher looks like will be the U.S. women's marathon team. And Flanagan told us how proud she is of the quality of this women's field. Remember, we talked about the best, the deepest field ever. She said, we're going to send, no matter what happens, three what she called feisty girls to the <laughs> Olympic Games, all of whom will feel that they can contend for a medal. And that's an, an important place to be. Crowd gets a little thicker here in the final stages of the race which uh, serves to propel the runners along. Again, that grimace, but what would you expect after this? And uh, we'll keep an eye on the trials record for women, which is 228.25, set by Colleen DeRook back in 2004. Craig, one thing that I want to point out today is, you know, back in the 90s, I was always asked the question, what's wrong with American distance running, and why aren't we bringing home more medals? Um, and as you can see today, the ladies team and the men's team are going to be the best American marathoning team heading into London and trying to battle for those medals. And, and Shalane is on, you know, she's cruise control right now. Desi knows that she's going to come across that line second. And, and, and Kara's running supreme. So, I mean, this is a great, great team. Well, certainly for the women, it's an outstanding team. They're going to have to run because the rest of the world is getting better and better. And it may take times in the low 220s, if not faster, to medal. But this is a, a woman who can step up. She said she was in... You know, low 220 marathon shape today, and she proved it by winning this race. And here comes Shalane Flanagan down toward the finish. The final strides of this 26.2 mile endurance test. Shalane Flanagan making her third Olympic team by winning the Olympic trials. Shalane Flanagan, who trains in Portland, went to school at the University of North Carolina. Here is Desiree Davila.
28 years old, to make her first Olympic team by finishing second. And Kara Goucher holds third, and she's on her way to London. There's the U.S. team. Flanagan, Davila, Goucher. And in fourth place, Amy Hastings, college roommate of Desiree Davila, sees her friend go to London. She finishes just off the podium in fourth place and will not be making the U.S. team. Here comes Hastings in the final strides. And Hastings getting a cheer, but a bittersweet moment as she finishes in fourth place. Back to Houston in just a moment.